some omega-3 ALA. That was really, I, I ruined that. <laughs> I f***ed that up. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today's What I Eat In A Day YouTuber review is of Rose from Cheap Lazy Vegan. So Rose is a fellow Canadian, so of course, very proud. And I've watched a lot of her videos and I like love her personality. She's got lots of vegan recipes, um, some vegan meal prep, lots of What I Eat In A Day videos. Um, she's got vegan mukbangs, which I don't love and I find those problematic, but I will save that rant for another day. Um, but I also have heard that she's just about to open or if she has opened a restaurant called Savage Cafe so very awesome so this is one of Rose's more recent what I in a day videos um, since I started working on this one I saw that she released another one that's kind of a intermittent fasting fitness challenge and I thought about scrapping what I was been working on and, and, and doing the recent one however knowing that it's a fitness challenge it felt kind of unfair because I know what I know about challenges and diets is that they're not sustainable and probably if she's like everyone else, she'd be back to eating her normal way in no time after the challenge is up. So I figured that this was a more fair assessment of Rose's diet. So let's get to it. First of all, can we just say I love the logo because I also love noodles. So Good morning, everyone. Look at that sunlight. All right, before we even get into this, I just need to like take a moment to um, appreciate Rose's hair because while most vegans I feel um, really do preach, you know, the importance of greens, Rose like embodies green and I'm liking this. I'm like, I don't, I couldn't pull this shit off, that's for sure, um, but she looks great. I think it's fun. Let's do this. I love the lighting <laughs> in this apartment. Hello, okay. Good morning, guys. It's Rose, and welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another What I Ate in a Day video. Today is also Friday, so TGIF. We're definitely getting a few, few holiday pounds. You know what I'm saying? So let's keep it, let's keep it healthy today. <laughs> oh, girl, I hear ya. Um, I, I just love her. I just love her. Um, but like, here's the dealio on holiday weight gain. There is research on this and what it has shown is that most people on average gain a little bit of weight, 1.3 pounds. Honestly, in my books, not something to totally stress about. Um, but I would say that like if you go into the holiday season with like a cheat meal or like a cheat season mentality, you're bound to just overeat past your satiety signals and then spend the entire year after that trying to kind of like repent and restrict as a way to make up for, you know, what you had just um, kind of eaten during the holidays. But if you would just kind of like listen to your body's cues, it would be much easier to have like mindful, moderate portions of all your favorite holiday foods without feeling the need to completely overdo it. So let's keep it, let's keep it healthy today. Hopefully, <laughs> but also of course very delicious because I'm not about compromising on the taste. You know what I'm saying? So it is morning. I know what she's saying and that is a totally dietitian approved philosophy. You don't need to skip out on flavor and pleasure in order for things to be well balanced and to fuel your body right. In time, I've already had my liquids, okay? I've already had my water and I've already had my coffee as usual. So when I immediately wake up, I don't normally eat breakfast right away. Well, obviously it depends on what time I wake up. Today I woke up a bit later than I usually do. I woke up at seven o'clock and I had my coffee and I did some work. Mocha pot. <clears throat> by function of beauty I'm gonna talk about them more after I have breakfast because I'm starting to get hungry guys I'm gonna make myself a smoothie and I Okay, so what I'm hearing Rose talk about seems like a really intuitive way to think about food. She's not following a crazy restrictive diet. She's not fasting until late. Uh, she's simply just waiting for her body to feel ready to be interested in food. And that's great. If it works for her, it works for me. The more after I have breakfast because I'm starting to get hungry, guys. I'm gonna make myself a smoothie and I have here this prep little jar that has a few things that I like to add into my smoothie. The other day I was making a smoothie and I realized I was putting a lot of things into my- So smoothie's the first meal of the day. I mean, great, accessible, easy. At least it's not juice, which is unusual for, you know, vegan YouTubers I've been noticing. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look what's inside. My smoothie and I was like, okay, I should 
do something about this because I am sick and tired of carrying out like 10 bags of things when I am making a smoothie. So if you like to add a lot of things into your smoothie, I suggest portion. So I prepped like four of these jars when I uh, made a smoothie last time so that anytime I make a smoothie I can just easily put this in and I don't have to worry about all of the things that are in here. So in here I've got some protein powder, I have greens powder, spirulina powder, hemp seeds, chia seeds, and I even have goji berries. And I think I also have some flax seeds in here as well. So it's full of a lot of really good things and I like to always add these into my smoothies but quite often I get lazy and I don't want to take every single thing out. If you want to make it easier on yourself just prep and portion in advance that's like a super awesome idea i have never thought about doing that myself but yeah if like if you're a smoothie person and you want all these different kind of um, add-ins to your smoothie assuming they're all like shelf stable then why not like put them into little baggies put them into jars that way you just like literally grab one every single day throw it into the blender with your you know your your milk or your fruit or whatever else is going in there i think it's a really great time saving hack and that way you don't need to schlep all the things out of the pantry i get that that is a big pain in the ass as for this smoothie concoction i mean there's a lot of supplements here some of which are kind of expensive like the greens powder or the goji berries or spirulina and things like that uh, so not so cheap miss cheap lazy vegan um, but I would say that I'm happy she's getting a lot of you know protein in there some healthy fats lots of antioxidants um, she's even got iron in there which I know is like a little bit more hard to plan on a plant-based diet so I think that's really great and ultimately in the world of smoothies um, this is a lot more balanced than all the kind of like fruit only smoothies I've seen on a lot of vegan channels so thumbs up i'm gonna add a slice of ginger as well because apparently ginger is good for you i've got some frozen berries i'm gonna add in i have a frozen banana as always and i even have some frozen spinach and i'm going to also add probably some almond milk oh my god look what i've done no I just spilled all the blueberries five second roll five second roll i'm totally okay with that oh my god Whew. what do you do when you spill blueberries you pick them you up pick them up again <laughs> and probably wash them a lot. I'm also gonna add one date because I wanna sweeten it up. And here's the piece of ginger. Just one date. Um, I can honestly imagine like freely doing a response video on how there's just not enough dates and you need to, you need to carb the up, bros. Um, no, but seriously, from my perspective, one date is like a totally reasonable amount of dates to be putting in a smoothie unlike some other youtubers that have different opinions um but i i think it's dates are a really great way to add natural sweetness and that way you don't actually have to add in any kind of sugar or maple syrup or agave or honey or anything like that So that's awesome. I mean, can we just take a moment to appreciate a balanced smoothie for once on the internet? This is so much better than a lot of the smoothies I've seen on other YouTubers channels. Um, this one has a lot going on. We've got spinach, we've got vegetables, we've got banana, we've got berries, we've got almond milk, um, we've got that powder situation. So we've got protein in there, lots of healthy fats, um, the iron. I'm just happy to see a balanced smoothie for once in the vegan YouTube space. And because it has that fiber and protein and fat in there, I think this one's going to actually keep Rose satiated for a lot longer than the just plain old banana and date smoothies I've seen. He's probably not going to fill me up completely. So I'm also going to have one piece of toast with some hummus and lots of alfalfa sprouts. Mm. That looks great. Simple, honestly. Look very good, but a smoothie looks like. I mean, it always looks like a bunch of sludge, but let's see how it tastes. So, real talk, the best smoothies in life look like sludge. Um, true story. Um, but yeah, that that breakfast as a whole looks great. It's well balanced. We've got you know various food groups represented. It doesn't feel overly restrictive. Um, we've got some protein. We've got some fiber. We've got some antioxidants. We've got some good fats in there. Uh, I really like it. I think it looks very satisfying and and healthy and well balanced. Also, this is so easy. No, it doesn't look like an Instagram styled video, but this is real life. 
So, bravo. I think I can make myself a bit of a salad type situation. I have some leftover lasagna, but I think I have some veggies I need to cook up. All right, let me just look and see what I can do. All right, I've... I love it. We're freestyling. Let's see what's for lunch. Bought some Chinese broccoli that I definitely need to use up. I might throw in some baby bok choy as well because I think that's also slightly going bad. The Chinese broccoli that kind of looks like my main. It's not the freshest, but you know what? I'm sure it's fine. We're gonna stir fry it. And then I have some tofu. This is medium firm tofu that um, I am going to eat as well. Let's see what I can make. I think I'm gonna do a soba noodle thing. Okay, I'm doing some soba noodles, Chinese broccoli, tofu, and maybe some bok choy. Let's see what we can make. Sounds awesome. I love just kind of like working with what you have in the fridge and pantry um, on the fly. And that's honestly how I cook as well. And it's especially when things are kind of like at the edge of their, their life and you need to kind of use them up before you just end up chucking them in the garbage. So yay for reducing waste. So I get how daunting it may seem to like not follow a recipe, not follow a set of rules and like not follow instructions and just kind of like make something on the fly. But like everything, that's kind of just like a skill that you, you kind of develop with practice. So the more you can get into the kitchen and just kind of like go for it, the more comfortable you're going to be. This up, kind of let it steam. I didn't add any oil, just going to let the water just cook it up. And then I'm just waiting for the water to boil so I can cook the soba noodles. All right, as you can see, it's already shrunk down a lot. I'm just going to season with some soy sauce, sesame oil, and I'm gonna add a bit of maple syrup because I think it's gonna be quite bitter. That looks awesome. I love Chinese broccoli and bok choy, um, but you know, honestly, they're a great source of fiber, folate, vitamin A, vitamin K, calcium, and Chinese broccoli also has some omega-3 ALA content. So, yay! I love that Rose is steaming her vegetables here. It is like one of my favorite ways to cook, um, mainly because it helps to really retain some of the nutrients better than let's say boiling, uh, where a lot of those kind of water soluble nutrients can be leached into the water, especially if we like overboil and overcook them as like let's say our grandparents used to. Um, but when it comes to kind of cooking versus raw, I mean, I've talked about this before and I'll briefly touch on it again. Some fruits and vegetables are better raw from a nutrient perspective. Others are better when they're cooked. Some foods are kind of more tough and the fibers are tough. So cooking them helps to break them down and make them more easy to digest so that those nutrients are just more bioavailable to us. Honestly, at the end of the day, my recommendation is to just try to get a variety of fruits and vegetables into your day, because uh, that is the most important thing. Add a tiny bit of maple syrup to counteract the bitterness. And then on this pan right here, I'm gonna cook up the tofu. I also just wanna kind of quickly point out that I, I like that um, Rose is suggesting using like a hint of maple syrup to counterbalance the bitterness of greens, because a lot of people would try greens on their own, steamed for example, maybe without salt or sugar or fat and think, this tastes terrible, I'm never trying this again. But sugar is just another tool in the chef's toolbox. There's no need to be completely irrationally uh, scared of a little bit of sugar or salt or fat. You know, including these things in moderation is a great way to enhance the natural flavors of a lot of these naturally nourishing foods. Just spraying on some oil. Ah, this is hard to do this with one hand. I get that. Like the joys of being a vlogger. This is so hard to do with like one hand and cooking. This is why like, like I totally f fail at my own what I eat in a day videos. It's too much for me, too much coordination. So this is medium firm tofu. And uh, normally I don't pan fry medium firm tofu, although it is actually quite good because I like the softness of it. I'm gonna cook it on each side. What I like to do is I just leave it for it to cook. I'm gonna leave it on medium high heat. I'm gonna cook it for about like four minutes on each side. Let's see what happens after four minutes. In the meantime, my water is boiling, so I'm gonna throw in the soba noodles. And that only takes about five minutes to cook. The Chinese broccoli and the bok choy looks like it's very much reduced. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of sesame oil. Look how little there is left. I'm just hoping these parts are softened. All right, I'm gonna try to see. It's still pretty 
soft, I think. Ah. But, oh, look at that. I mean, I could leave it on for a bit longer, but I'm also impatient. So, let's see. If it breaks, it's not a huge deal, to be honest. Oh, it's hard to do this with one hand. There we go. Okay. Yeah. That was a nail biter, folks. Honestly, if it was me, I would be tempted to just like add some more oil to the pan because I'm just like, I could see the tofu wanting to just like hold onto that pan and not let go without a mess. So that would have been my instinct, but I'm glad we like got through that. So I love that Rose is always trying to get like a satisfying source of protein in her diet. Um, and in this case, we're talking about tofu or soy protein. I mean, soy has gotten a bad reputation, in my opinion, unnecessarily. Um, there's a lot of people out there saying that it causes cancer and thyroid issues and infertility. When actually the evidence shows that soy actually has a lot of health benefits, even for non-vegans. In fact, for most people, soy has actually been shown to have protective effects against things like cancer. It also has been shown to have a lot of heart healthy effects and that it helps lower triglycerides and cholesterol, particularly LDL cholesterol, which is considered the bad cholesterol. I have an entire video all about soy. So if you're interested in seeing that, you can check it out right here. Ironically, the one that I tried to flip after putting the camera down is the one that broke. So I'm gonna let this cook for another like four minutes or so, and then that should be done. And noodles are almost done. All right, we're also gonna make a quick sauce. We are taking some gochujang, Korean red pepper paste. That's what it looks like, Korean hot pepper paste. We're also gonna take some apple cider vinegar, sesame oil, maple syrup, and soy sauce. Let's so one of the things I really love about Rose's meal here is that she's exploring a variety of cooking techniques. She's boiling the noodles, she's steaming the vegetables, she's pan frying the tofu. So if you're a beginner cook who's watching Rose at home, uh, just kind of trying to follow along, you actually can learn quite a lot. And honestly, while I personally cannot imagine like dirtying three pans or pots at the same time in the middle of like a work day, uh, mama don't have time for that anymore. Uh, you could theoretically be doing all of this in batch prep on the weekend, for example, in like large quantities. So you can just kind of assemble throughout the week because each component is like very, very simple as you can see. It doesn't require any kind of like really fancy equipment or really kind of um, over the top techniques or, or cooking skills to be able to pull this off. Just add those veggies in there. Mm. Mm. As always, let's top with some toasted sesame seeds. I also added a few pieces of leftover tempeh here. That's just leftover teriyaki tempeh. I just had it, so I thought I might as well add it. And then last but not least, we're gonna add some green onions. These are just chopped green onions. There we go. And there is the finished bowl. There are some spicy noodles in there. Love a good noodle shot. And now I'm like really craving noodles. So maybe that's what I'm having for dinner tonight. Um, but this looks great and, and true to her name, cheap. I don't know if it's lazy, but definitely cheap and vegan, um, but also really easy actually as well. So bravo. All right guys. The lunch was so delicious. I think I literally ate it in less than 10 minutes. I do want something sweet, so I thought I would have some blueberries. Yay! I love that the floor blueberries are back and they're looking mighty shiny. So they've clearly uh, been washed thoroughly. So that's great. Food safety, number one. But also, can't fault her on that. I mean, blueberries are a fantastic snack. Um, they're rich in antioxidants and fiber. They're naturally sweet. And I appreciate that she's consuming them in their whole state um, and in a reasonable portion as well. We're not like bringing in like, like a literally fruit markets full of blueberries to consume as a snack. So this looks great to me. I did wash them thoroughly, guys. I'm gonna take my vitamins. I am actually terrible at remembering to take vitamins. I do try to take B12 as often as I can remember. And um, this is just a mixture of different vitamins. I know there's B12 in here. I think that there is some sort of omega-3 thing. I think there's also vitamin D, although I could be wrong. Anyways, it's just like a mixture of different vitamins. I'm just gonna take them. And yeah, just remember to take your B12, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. Because honestly, so many YouTubers out there are not talking about supplements. And I love that you're explicitly saying, hey, 
Don't forget about your B12 supplement because B12 is found in animal products. It's not naturally found in plant-based foods. So of course it is very important to make sure that you're taking a supplement if you're following a plant-based vegan diet. Um, also she mentioned she's taking vitamin D though I'm not sure that she is just because I know what these things look like and I don't see a supplement there that looked like vitamin D. Um, so maybe she forgot that day, um, but we're in Canada. We're in Canada and we usually do need vitamin D, but of course always speak to your doctor about that. In terms of omega-3s, um, again, I think that's a really important one, not just for vegans, but honestly for, for a lot of people, um, there are very few really rich sources of omega-3s in the diet, particularly when we're talking about EPA and DHA. However, for your own information, we can now find a EPA and DHA omega-3 that is vegan, um, in a lot of kind of health food stores and drug stores. So speak to your pharmacist, speak to your doctor, um, and they will help you find the right supplement for you. And if you wanna see some of the ones that I like, um, you can check out my Amazon affiliate link below. Okay, so let's see what Rose is having for dinner. Guys, I have been working all day. It's been pretty busy, so I've been working and I actually just went to the gym and I just got back. And um, I kind of want to do something with cauliflower. I always get some sort of like charred cauliflower at restaurants and I kind of want to try making that as part of like a dinner. Um, obviously, it's not ever going to be a full dinner. <laughs> Who eats cauliflower for dinner like please so yeah i kind of want to try making charred cauliflower because i have cauliflower left and i'm like okay should i try and char this even though i don't really know how to char i think i'm gonna throw it onto a pan for a bit i just love how real she is and how adventurous she is in the kitchen you know i love taking inspiration from restaurants and meals that i've had while traveling abroad and when i get home i'm like oh i have this photo of this beautiful uh dish that i had in this beautiful restaurant i want to find a way to recreate it maybe add some more nutrition in it add some more fiber add some more veggies to the meal um kind of put my own spin on it and some of my best recipes have kind of being born out of that. And when we test recipes at Abby's Kitchen, let me tell you, it is not always easy. It's not always a walk in the park. They don't always come out perfectly in the first go. There are times where we have 10 different batches of a recipe before we've said, yeah, this actually tastes really good. It worked out perfectly. This is the right cooking time. So I appreciate that she has this like kind of like no fear approach to cooking. Whereas like she doesn't actually know exactly what she's doing, but she's willing to jump in there, give it a go and kind of walk you through that, that adventure and that process. And it's really fun to watch. And I might try and throw it in the oven. I'm not really sure. I'm kind of lazy, so I don't want to do too much. I got life to live. All right, I'm going to use the same pan that I did not clean <laughs> because you know what? Nobody has some flavor in there, you know? Some flavor already in there. I'm actually going to use a bit of olive oil, maybe a little more than what I would normally use. Maybe would wash the pan for food safety purposes. I'm not sure. Let's see how this goes. So I'm gonna make sure this is on high heat. I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> it might just cook it. All right, let's, oh my God, it's like, ooh. I think it's kind of burnt because I didn't wash the pan, but it's kind of working in my favor right now. So it might even add some flavor from whatever I had before. So this meal looks great. I mean, basically we've got everything we want here. We've got lots of vegetables. We've got some pan fried tofu with barbecue sauce. Looks like some frozen corn and edamame, which is a really economical, easy choice. So it really does speed up the dinner if you can rely on some of those freezer staples. So love that as a little um, tip. One of the things that really stands out to me is that um, Rose's meals feel like they're appropriately portioned to kind of be satisfied to her. Um, probably also would be pretty satisfying to me as well. But I find that there's a lot of YouTubers out there recommending these huge portions that take up an entire dinner table. And that's just not realistic or necessary for a lot of people. So I love that Rose is just keeping it real and normalizing her diet. 
Okay, so let's take a look at Rose's nutritional breakdown. As a whole, Rose is getting approximately 1,738 calories with 23% of her energy coming from protein, 42% coming from carbs, and 31% coming from fat. Overall, I would say that Rose's diet is like really well balanced and seemingly well thought out, even though it doesn't seem like she's actually like thinking really hard or planning or following a set of rules. It actually seems quite intuitive and kind of like she just kind of goes with the flow, which is awesome. Rose's diet is also really high in fiber. She's getting about 50 grams in her day, which is amazing. Uh, she's also getting a lot of omega-3s, even without the supplement, um, and getting adequate amounts of calcium, iron, and B vitamins, which can be difficult ones to get on a completely plant-based diet, so that's amazing. Plus, with all of the different sources of protein in her day, she's also getting all nine essential amino acids. Uh, soy, for example, is a plant-based source of protein with all of the amino acids, so that's incredible. If I were to eat like Rose for a day, I think I would probably be very happy and very satisfied. So let's talk about what I like about Rose's diet. Number one, her recipes are simple and delicious looking. I love that Rose is not fussing over these elaborate recipes. Everything seems accessible, easy, relatively quick to put together. There aren't a ton of crazy ingredients with the exception of some of the supplements that she has in her um, smoothie in the morning. Uh, but for the most part, this feels like something that even I could pull off on my craziest busy mama, working mom days. So for that, I think she really does make veganism seem very inviting and accessible. Number two, she explores a variety of ingredients and meal ideas. So I think when we watch a lot of these YouTubers healthy meal ideas and videos, we see a lot of the same recipes, right? Smoothie bowls, avocado toast, juices, you know. And I'm sure like maybe, maybe Rose eats all of those things too, and that's great. But I appreciate that we actually got to see kind of some of her South Korean roots come through. Um, and all these recipes seem really fun and unique and enjoyable. I think a lot of us have this kind of whitewashed idea of what healthy food is or what vegan food is. And we shouldn't be afraid to experiment with all of these other delicious cultural cuisines. So I'm just really appreciative of all of these great ideas that I feel like I've walked away with and that I'm gonna try to incorporate into my meal prep and planning for the weeks ahead. And finally, she sends out really positive nutrition and food vibes. I mean, all of the things that Rose talks about makes veganism feel very approachable, very accessible, uh, even easy. Um, so I really think that's amazing. She just likes good food and believes it should taste great. And that's awesome. Um, I also find that she's not overtly preachy in her philosophy. She's not cutting out full food groups while still maintaining a balanced plant-based diet. So it seems like she's literally just eating in a way that makes her feel good. And it makes me want to have a meatless meal. So she's doing a great job. As for what I don't love, Honestly, I kind of like racked my brain to think about like, was there anything in this video that I wasn't loving? And I couldn't really think of much. However, what I will say is that I just feel like she has such an intuitive approach to eating. Um, I would hate to see her throw that away and get sucked into diet culture with this kind of like fitness challenge, in, like intermittent fasting diet that she was kind of like trialing uh, later on in her, in her journey on her YouTube channel. Just stick with what works and what is working is listening to your body. And I think that that above all is the best measure of health. So stick to it, Rose. Come back to me. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of What I Eat In A Day YouTube Review. If you did, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below with any other YouTubers that you want me to review. Don't forget to check out my entire playlist of some more What I Eat In A Day videos. Subscribe to the channel. Don't forget that and share this with your friends. And I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.